We're tracking breaking news out of Quebec this hour. A huge explosion at a business near a village about an hour north of Montreal. Up to four people from the fuel distribution centre are missing at the moment and there is concern about further explosions. The CBC Sarah Galashin is following the breaking news for us this hour and joins me now. So Sarah, what's the latest update? Well, Andrew, right now there are about uh, 100 uh, people who have been evacuated uh, from this area that is of concern. Many of them, uh, or at least some of them, staying in, in the basement of the village church. There's hope that they might be able to return to their homes later today. But right now, uh, this is a fire that is burning out of control right now. Uh, there are 50 fire feeder, fire. 50 firefighters who are currently working to fight this right now. They have cordoned off a, a, a perimeter of about a kilometer surrounding this area because fighting this fire is complicated by the fact that this, uh, of the, the fuel that exists at this business where this fire has occurred. Uh, the initial call for fire came at around 11.17 this morning. It was followed by an explosion. Uh, and, and given that on the site here there is propane, we know there can be heating oil or other uh, flammables, uh, other uh, potential flammables on the site there could there is the possibility there could also be more explosions and that is uh, of great concern to those who are on the ground right now fighting it also of concern given uh, the kind of materials that they are dealing with the fact that there could be contamination of both the air and the water and so that is additionally complicating the firefighting efforts uh, underway right now we just we heard a little bit more about that at a press conference that happened just uh, last hour I want to play you that Maybe the challenge for the firefighter is uh, the hydrocarbon because the, it make a, it, 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 the necessity in water is uh, really, really uh, high. So if we want to limit the application of water, we should apply uh, some foam to limit that because the, the leaking of the water will go in the river and maybe contaminate. The, so if we want to make a thing uh, more, not, not easily, but more safe, uh, we should just work uh, smarter. I want to put up a map here just to show you where this is all happening. About an hour north outside of Montreal, as I say, this is uh, just happening outside of, of the village of saint roch de la Chagan, which is a small community, a village. Um, and right now, the search is right now for a possibly missing four individuals, complicated by the fact that uh, no one can get on to the site. And, Andrew, what they are trying to do right now to work out uh, exactly how many might be missing here is figure out who uh, was supposed to be at work, who was at work when this at this happened at this business. So what more do we know about the business where the explosion began? The deputy director for the municipality has named the business as Propin La Fortune. We understand that it's a family-run fuel distributor. Uh, the company has uh, four outlets, this being one of them, and CBC has reached out to uh, one of the other outlets, uh, a rep for the company declining to comment at this time. Uh, once again from police, they are urging uh, well, they are unable to, to actually conduct uh, much more of their investigation other than figure out um, who was supposed to be at work uh, and who exactly is, is missing. The communication to those who have been evacuated is that they are hopeful they'll be able to return later tonight. But right now, Andrew, this is very much an ongoing situation and, and uh, it remains a dangerous situation, so mm -hmm. much so that paramedics remain back in the village and are unable to access the site. I know. We'll, we'll be following it in the hours to come and you will be yeah. too. Uh, Sarah, thank you. The CBC Sarah Galat. We're joined now by Gina Licata. She lives in St. Hoc de la Chigan. She and her husband were evacuated to the community church this morning, and we've reached her there now. So, Gina, thank you for talking to us. Where were you when the, when the explosion happened? Actually, I was in the car, so I was lucky. I was running errands, and we are going back home, but never got to go back home because my street, 10 minutes before I got evacuated, were about three quarters of kilometers away from the fire. So we're lucky we're safe. Lucky you're safe. And I understand you are able to go back home uh, soon, right? So tell us about that. Uh, excited, yes, because um, I have two dogs. So I wasn't even able to evacuate my dog. So I was very emotional right now. Yeah, I bet you were, you're worried about them, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you're able to do and, that. And go ahead. And, and being here at, you know, at the bottom of the church, we're, we're lucky, you know, they took care, good care of us, but we had no communication, no TV, no radio. Uh, we have our cell phones, but just trying to keep our batteries because we didn't recharge our batteries. Um, so it, it was really hard. We're here since 1230 and no communication. Uh, nobody here to give us any news. So I'm glad that, you know, I 
go back home now and mm -hmm. get up to date. Now, uh, when you were driving, did, did you hear anything? Did you see anything? Can you tell us about that? Yes. I, it happened that I, when I looked out the window, it was a funnel. It was a black funnel of black smoke. And my neighbor, Michelle, he actually saw when it happened, when it exploded, he said it was like a tree had fallen on the house, the, the sound. And it was then it was popcorn, like explosive popcorn. And he would see everything flying because like, like I said, we're only like three quarters of kilometers away. So he got to see it live happen when it happened. Wow, that is really something else. And so, um, you know, have you? Do you know this? Uh, you know this business. You probably have driven by there, gone there. Yes, yes, yes. We we do know. Uh, I mean, uh, it just so happened that two years ago I bought a fan, um, a, a ceiling fan from that place, and they, you know, I had a contact with the lady, and now we're trying to see if we can find them. So. It touches us. We're a close community here, so we're not very many here. Yeah, I know, and people are uh, people are certainly concerned it's about. Very close. Um, yeah, I bet. And so you look at some of these uh, images, and so the church where you're at now is that uh, is is that near the site, or how far are you away from the site, or how far Definitely. are you away from we're home? Probably, we're probably a kilometer and a half away, maybe. We're not mm -hmm. very far. We're really, really close. Mm -hmm. And what do you know about your house, or, or what's happened to your house, or is everything okay? Well, my house should be okay, because mm -hmm. my neighbors that were evacuated that got to meet here, um, they said everything was fine. Uh, it seems okay, because we live in a little street, but we're surrounded by water. We live like in, a, in, a, in an island, so we're surrounded by water. So now they're worried maybe contaminants being in the water, because that's our water source. So that's another worry that I have right now, so I'm mm -hmm. just waiting to see. Mm -hmm. They say that they're going to use foam rather than water, that maybe that will help in trying to put the fire out. But can you just describe what the atmosphere has been like uh, with, your, with your neighbors at the church? It's heavy. We're all worried. Uh, some people had to take medication. So the, 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 the pharmacy here actually helped some people go get medication because they, can't, they, they left everything at home. So, and uh, we have the little cafes and little places that are offering donuts and stuff to help us out. So it's really, really nice. We, we got really, really uh, helpful. Yeah. Well, well, Gina, I'm glad. Playing cards. Playing cards, <laughs> nice to pass the time. I'm glad you're able to uh, go no home. No technology so. here. Huh? We have no technology. Uh, we, we do have a technology, but everything's at home. In the city, like in, in the church here, they, they don't have nothing, no. So. Yeah. So has it been a little, oh, it's, it's been strange not be, having information, right? You feel kind of like in, in the dark? Isolated, isolated, yeah. totally. I mean, I could have turned on my phone and stuff, but when you want to hold your battery, you have a choice to make. So, you know, it, it was a hard choice, but I made the choice to let go of technology and, and stay with my community. Yeah. yeah. Well, Gina, I appreciate you taking the time today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gina Licata. I appreciate it. A resident yes, of St. Hawk de Lachigan.